to us up, brother. <laughs> Jesse Dufault, you are the star, one of the leads. <laughs> Yeah. And that's a big cast, so you must be excited for Almost Mercy. It's screening here tonight in Rhode Island. Tell me about it. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, Almost Mercy is the first. Uh, you want me to grab it? Either way, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Almost Mercy is the first lead role I've ever had in a film. Yep. Uh, so that's exciting, especially for something like this to get such a distribution. Um, I mean, it's going to, to Netflix, Amazon Instant, DVD. I mean, it's, it's going to get out there and be seen by people. So, I don't know, it's pretty wild. It's... Uh, and it's brought a lot of good things. Like with Almost Mercy, it's made a lot of connections with other film people. It's what led me to meet a few other people to get me my first uh, tag role and a few other things. So it's uh, it's been great. It's been a, a life-changing, career-changing film, and it hasn't even premiered yet, too. So it's uh, it's exciting. Almost Mercy with Jesse Dufault, one of the lead actors in Almost Mercy. Here we are in Warwick, and it's cool because this is just a you know, being here in Warwick, Rhode Island, just miles from your home, my home. Yeah. yeah. Director Tommy DiNucci's home, Chad Verdi, the producer. But this movie is going to be seen everywhere. Yeah. You know, people have the opportunity to see Almost Mercy in their homes throughout the world. Yeah. And people you don't even know are going to be sitting there with a bucket of popcorn on their couch watching you, man. How do you feel about that? That I think that's what's pretty crazy. Like, I'll be able to go on, on websites and see reviews. Uh, I mean, good and bad, I'm sure. But, I mean, who knows? It's, uh, it's, it's exciting. It's, I've never been a part of a film that's gotten this far um, that's that's gotten such a distribution level so uh yeah it's it's exciting your your character in this film is someone who's kind of the victim of bullyization and someone who kind of is that bernard gets ticking time bomb you know and yeah. some of that situation uh the people are going to see this movie and kind of be their minds are going to be blown i think so dark characters dark yeah. story what's it like to be in a movie with content that's not uh it's not a romantic comedy, let's put it that way. Tell me about it, man. Well, what I love, and especially about Tommy's writing, too, is it, it, it doesn't apologize for anything. It's, it's, it shows what's going around today, I mean, with school shootings, with bullying, with, and, it, and it, doesn't, it never apologizes for it. It says, this is what's happening. You know, it's never, it's never like, briefly touching upon something. It's, 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 and not, I don't want to say shoving it in their faces, but it's saying, take a look at this. Like, there's a lot of social commentary on it, too, that I think is... Uh, is I think people are going to take a lot of, and I think that a lot of films haven't really explored before. So I think it's going to be a, yeah, it, it's a different take that, that doesn't have to apologize for it, but also is also trying to open up those conversations saying this is what's happening. It's like a modern day horror film. It's like right. the, this is what's happening in the schools today. So it's, it's pretty wild. What's going on with you and your career now, Jesse? Um, well, after Almost Mercy, I, I met a few other great people, and I just finished a film called The Mind's Eye, uh, directed by Joe Begos. He just did Almost Human. Uh, you can catch that on Netflix. And uh, it was pretty great. That one was a, a great experience. I got to Graham Skipper, who was also the lead in Almost Human. I had a quick scene with him. And also with Noah Segan. Um, Noah Segan played Kid Blue and Looper with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis. He was also in that other Joseph Gordon-Levitt movie, uh, Brick. Okay. Um, so it was, it was interesting to definitely feel like, I mean, since Almost Mercy, to have my acting career start to really... Put some momentum. Yeah, 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 to share the screen with some people that I've, I've watched while I was growing up. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty wild. It's been a great year. Yeah. Yeah. What else uh, do you want to say to the viewers of Messier Moment to encourage them to check out Almost Mercy? Because as an ambassador to the film, and you've got to be psyched up, this is your career, so what's what can you say to get these people to watch this film, man? Wow, that's uh, <laughs> no that's a big yeah, I know. <laughs> um, well, I don't know, and obviously I'm biased as being a a big part in this film, but uh, it's a uh, it's unlike any movie I've ever seen, and yeah. unlike any script I've ever read. Like I remember when Tommy first sent me the script, and I read through it. Like there were times where I was like, like it's it's so overly, not overly ambitious, but it was just like this is. Yeah. This is the real deal. There, like he's not holding back, and right. uh, and the film definitely doesn't. It, uh, it's it's in your face. It's 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 wild. Right. It's a wild, wild ride. I don't want to give too much away, but uh, I think people are really gonna. I think people are gonna leave the theater or their homes once they watch it, and and be affected by it. Yeah. And and it's something that's gonna stick with them, which I think is it proves to be. What, I mean, what any great movie is something that will stick with you, and the story, I think, really does that. So. And one last question, man, Jesse. When you take on a role, whether it's whether it's your character in Almost Mercy or any film acting or even stage acting role, yeah. what's your approach? And that's a big question. But what's your approach? I mean, where do you start as an actor to tackle the project? It's you always have to put yourself in those seats. So, like, there's sometimes when the character I play, Jackson, does some pretty dark 
somewhat unforgivable things, but you can't approach it as, as saying, oh, well, what he's doing is bad. You have to get into the mindset and say, why did he do this? Right. And, and that's what I think Almost Mercy does so well, is it really delves into the backstories, and you see the, the people, like, like the school shooters, you get to see why these people did what they did. And, um, and you almost feel bad for these people in, in some of this, and almost root for them in some of those situations where, where you wouldn't normally do. But it's, I think it's great to kind of flip that where, I don't know, you get to see the other side of the story, which media never shows. It's, uh, yeah, which, and I think that's, that's one of my favorite things about how I was able to approach that is saying, well, why did Jackson do the things that he did? And, and kind of justify that for myself. So, yeah. As an actor, you don't want to judge your character. You just want to be yeah. who you're being. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesse Dufault, man, this has been great. Yeah, absolutely. You got a big night ahead. You got the keys to the city or the keys to uh, South Greenwich, Rhode Island there? What's that? It's from uh, the TV show Lost. It's a okay. prop key. <laughs> yeah. Right. The Dharma hatch. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, <laughs> yeah. Jesse Dufault, man. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.